Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to another edition of the Pure Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Dimitri Giancoulis, and today we are talking 15 best client accountability tips to help keep you accountable. Now, why are we coming up with this? Well, because a lot of people are stressed out, and when they think of fitness, they think of this big mountain, they think of this big obstacle that has to be so challenging and complicated. And when you really put it down in, in, in layman's way, fitness, like any other task, requires some kind of a plan, it requires some kind of action that you actually got to do, and it requires some kind of follow-up, okay? You, you test drive a new car, you put it on the road, you drive for a bit, after a month, you got to test drive, you got to look at the engine, you got to see if there's any issues needed, you go get your teeth cleaned, you got to go back in a few months to get a checkup, an x-ray to see if anything's wrong. The same happens to your fitness program. So I wanted to start off today by breaking down the 15 client accountability tips that we give our members to help them navigate through plateaus. Now, what is a plateau? A plateau is a natural and very normal process of your body getting used to the stimulus. Now the stimulus can be through exercise. It could be through the exercise load. So one stimulus is you take someone who's never worked out and now they're training all of a sudden. And that's a stimulus they weren't used to. So after a few weeks, their body gets used to that stimulus. You look at someone who's training with free weights versus cardio. They were already training with cardio. Now you're adding a brand new stimulus, which is free weights. Their body after a while will get used to it. Well, the body adapts and adaptation is a natural phenomenon that occurs because our body wants to get used to what's happening and make it be a regular process. Just like if I'm giving you chicken salad with avocado every night for dinner, you will adapt to that taste and you'll want to change it. So when you're looking at breaking plateaus, the proper way to do so is to have some form of a system, some form of a, of a process where you go step by step in trying one of these accountability hacks, if you want to call them. And each one of these, when you put them together, is a nice little suitcase, which is, arm, is going to arm you up with all the ammunition you need to break through. Now, some of these are nutritional uh, tricks you can work on, or nutritional hacks, if you want to call them. They're mindset hacks. Some of them are habitual hacks that you can work on. But when it comes to not plateauing in any type of workout, or exercise program, you gotta look at three concepts. You got your mindset, you got your physical training, you got your nutrition, okay? If you wanna add a fourth one, which will be your habits, here we go. Okay, so number one is we tell people, you need support, okay? You need a support system. So we tell our clients, and I'm reading through the list that I have here that we go through with our members, you need to text, and I put your coach's name, when you feel weak, or when you feel you're making no progress, or if you're making mistakes. If you don't text your coach over the next five days, I put you owe them a bottle of wine, okay? As a little fun, uh, a little fun penalty there. So if you don't have support and you can't reach out to someone to let them know of areas you're having problems with, well, guess what happens? You hire a trainer, you join a gym, you say, you know what? The COVID-19 pandemic is here. I'm gonna start exercising. I'm gonna start getting physically fit. So I'm gonna start jogging every day. But after a week's worth of jogging, your knee starts to bug you. Now, if you're not reaching out to a coach, physiotherapist, someone saying, listen, I'm jogging, I'm liking it, but my knee hurts, that's gonna progress and get worse. So you need some kind of support. And typically the support I'm talking about is reaching out to a coach and letting them know what you're doing. Reaching out to a friend of yours, a best friend of yours saying, hey, I'm gonna be training three times a week but if I skip a session, I'm going to text you because I want you to keep me accountable. Without support, you're doing this on your own. And let's face it, guys, there's a small percentage, 5 maybe 10% of people that can actually get through this and do it on their own versus the rest of the population which tries, has trouble, and then quits. Okay, number two, set reminders, okay? So every three hours from the average time you wake up, um, set reminders for mini snacks or mini meals and name them with a positive quote, okay? So you get your phone, if you typically wake up early, so I try to wake up 5, 5.30 on a regular basis, I wanna meditate, I wanna prime my body, I wanna be quiet because I have a lot of problems with attention, so I wanna get my body relaxed, 
I want to have introspection time for myself and then let the day begin with all the chaos that's going to happen. So if you wake up at 7 o'clock and you eat your first meal 7.30, 7.45, set little reminders every three hours or whenever your snack time is, if it's 10 o'clock, set one reminder. And the reminder is going to pop up and say, time for a snack. You're amazing. Don't miss it. Next reminder, lunchtime, 12.30. Hey, it's lunch. Stop your work. Take care of your body. You can do it. Three hours later, snack time. Grab some veggies, even though you hate them. You're amazing. Six, seven o'clock at night comes around. Now, even if you're having dinner at your regular time, set the reminder so it becomes a habit. So you can put a reminder like six o'clock, make sure you're not having any carbs unless it's Saturday night or you've just had a workout. And then you can have another reminder for 9, 9.30, which is gonna go off and tell you no carbs, no ice cream, no sweets. It's a protein shake with some vegetables and some peanut butter, or it's gonna be an omelet. So setting reminders, although you may think, listen, do I really need another reminder? It's gonna actually keep you in habit. And if you get used to it, you can just switch the reminder off after a while. But what's important is for the times that you're stuck at work and you're busy, and it's lunchtime and you have deadlines and you're like, you know what, there's no way I can stop right now. I'm gonna go through it. Your phone's gonna remind you. So you hit snooze. And then five minutes later, it's gonna come back again. By you going to hit snooze again, you have to make the decision. Am I gonna hit snooze and snooze on my life? Or am I gonna stop and give myself 10 bloody minutes to give myself some fuel so I don't slow my metabolic rate and so I don't gain the weight that I'm trying to lose, okay? Number three, track your exercise. So I'm not talking track it in a cell phone, in a laptop. I'm talking about track it in a planner, something that's written, no phones, have it visual so you can see it every day and you can learn from your good and bad habits, okay? Now here's a great example. So I got myself one of these calendars, right? You see it there, we all got calendars. And if you can visually look at a week right now, I'm looking at my calendar here and we got four weeks, we got Monday to Sunday, if I put a check mark with the body part I train. So my program is different from the average person. Let's hear doing a total body workout for weight loss, okay? I put Monday, um, exercise, 60 minutes, check mark. Tuesday, I put an X with a sad face, and I said, had to go to a birthday. Wednesday, I was busy with work, came home late, I didn't work out. X, no workout, really upset. Thursday, Friday, workout, workout, I log it. Saturday, Sunday, nothing. Now you may feel like, oh my gosh, this is more work now. I'm doing extra work and this is becoming a hassle. If you can trust me, I've been doing this for 24 years. If you can trust me on this and you go through the process of the entire month, not only can you look back now and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Out of 30 days in the month, I only worked out eight days. Well, if you're not getting the results you want at the end of 30 days, you know now, is it a training problem? Is it a nutrition problem? Or is it a mindset problem? And right off the bat, you can say it's a training problem. Let's switch the, the, the scenario around. Let's say you are training very frequently. And let's say you train four times a week. We have some clients that come to the studio. We specialize in body type specific training. For those of you who are listening who don't know what that is, there's three unique body types. There's an ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And if you're not eating and exercising for your body type, it's like you getting in a car that is super, super fast with six gears and you don't know how to change any gears, but you like it, you wanna buy it. It's not gonna work, you're not gonna be able to follow it. Or you're trying to make a meal with no recipe. So if you are an endomorphic client that's got a slow metabolism, and we're telling you to train five days a week, and you do five days of exercise, and you log it, and you log that they're all weight training sessions. Well, at the end of the month, if the needle never changed, you lose no body fat percentage, you don't lose any weight at all, we can look back now and say, you know what? Why don't we look at changing the workouts, and why don't we look at doing 10 minutes of AM jumping jacks or some cardio, and doing a PM workout? Or why not we add five minutes of skipping to the end of each workout? So five times four is 20 workouts. You add five minutes to each of those, that's a lot of extra time. And now you can gauge and see if you didn't lose weight in that one month, maybe it's nutrition because you know your training's down packed, okay? So number three, track your exercise. Number four, replace your AM carbs with nuts. Yes, that may sound crazy. Now, 
This is specific for the mesomorphic and endomorphic body type. And if you're not sure what those are, think of somebody that's tall, long, lanky, small shoulders, small waist, long limbs, small wrists, okay? That's your typical ectomorph, like my body type. They typically can handle carbohydrates more and they require more carbohydrates. Think of a basketball player. Those body types need carbs for breakfast. You cannot skip carbs for breakfast because you'll get into a position of possibly losing muscle mass. But if you're the mesomorphic person, think of wide shoulders, narrow waist, okay? Small joints, medium metabolism. You gain, you lose, you're up and down all your life. Or an endomorph, wide waist, wide shoulders, wide wrists, slow metabolic rate. You've always been a heavy set frame. Those body types do not need carbohydrates for breakfast. So what I put here is, if you're doing your AM workout, replace your bread, oatmeal, cereal, or fruit with nuts. Still have your protein and veggies, okay? The reason being is we don't want to give your body energy in the form of calories when you're trying to burn off body fat, okay? So if you're listening to me on the podcast, you can't see this, but picture if you're watching this on YouTube, here's five pounds of fat, okay? This is huge. It's thick, okay? It only weighs five pounds, but if you're trying to burn body fat beneath your, your cells, beneath your skin, beneath your muscle, especially the visceral body fat, the one that's stuck in your organs, okay? You should not be giving yourself carbs for breakfast. You don't need them. You've had 15 years of carbs stored in your body. You don't need them. So we're gonna replace carbohydrates with nuts. You can go with almonds, cashews, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, any nuts possible, try not to go with peanuts, they got a little bit higher fat than all the other, but you're replacing your carbohydrate with a nut. So here's a few examples. I'm gonna have an omelet with some tomatoes and some spinach, and I'm gonna have some avocado chopped on top, and I'm gonna have one third cup of nuts. Or I'm gonna have a Greek yogurt, and I'm gonna put some pumpkin seeds, some cinnamon, and a dash of protein powder, and mix it up. Or I'm gonna have some tuna with some mayo, I'm gonna mix it up with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, uh, some lemon onto it. I'm gonna grab some celery sticks and then a third cup of nuts. So if your goal is to lose weight, your body's gonna say, okay, you're giving me protein for breakfast. You're giving me fat. There's no carb here. You're not giving me anything to spike my blood sugar. You're giving me all three macronutrients. You're giving me some carbs from the vegetables. I'm gonna go right away and start burning body fat. And that's what you wanna do. You don't want to be having toast and cereals and oatmeals or bagels for breakfast. If your goal is to lose 5, 10, 15 pounds, you do not require the morning carb. Okay? Excellent. Next. So number five is always add a protein to each meal. Okay? By eating a flat palm's worth of protein. Um, now, protein can be lean protein, it could be dairy-based, Greek yogurt, it could be eggs, it could be protein powder. I'm not necessarily talking red meat, okay? Every time I say eat protein, people think of steak. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you're eating one of those proteins at each meal, A, you're gonna sure that you feel full, your satiety level is gonna be higher, you're gonna help with building muscle tissue, you're gonna prevent muscle breakdown, because remember, exercising means you're putting stress on your body and breaking down muscle tissue. It's gonna prevent you from overeating empty calories or too much carbs. It's also gonna help with speeding your, your ta- metabolism and increasing your strength. So by not having protein at every meal, you're confusing the body because you're telling the body, listen, we wanna get stronger, we wanna get healthier. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna have you flipping some tires three times a week. I'm gonna have you running on the treadmill. I'm gonna have you lifting and pushing and pulling weight Oh, and by the way, I'm not gonna give you the main building block that you need to build and maintain, okay? So now when we talk about body type specific, it gets even worse. The ectomorphic body type must have that protein, okay? If it does not have that protein, you're gonna be in trouble. Because what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna start eating a bunch of foods that are gonna be less in protein and you have a higher chance of burning muscle tissue, okay? Next, we're gonna look at keeping lunch simple. So for lunches, start off with a lean protein, have some salad, have one to two thumbs worth of a healthy fat, and think of the carb and how much you actually need. Is it a starchy carb? Do I wanna have some kind of carb, as in rice, pasta, a grain, yams? Or do I wanna have some fruit? 
based on your activity level. But you've got to make sure you keep lunch simple, okay? The next thing you want to focus on is pre-packing your snacks. Pack 15 small Ziploc bags with protein powder, quarter cup of nuts, take a picture, send it to your coach, let them know you're keeping accountable. Uh, an easy snack could be protein powder, water, a little bit of nuts, and some celery, okay? If you're mixing in these types of snacks and you have them free ready to go, it's gonna be much, much easier when you're trying to actually make a meal. Because what happens, guys, when we're trying to make a meal? We're often tempted to skip meals because we don't have it available. And if you don't have the meal available, you typically will have something that's not gonna be part of your meal plan or worse, more importantly, you're gonna be having the meal that is not on your meal plan, okay? So let's go to the next one. Number eight, uh, we're talking pre-book your exercise classes, okay? So here's a big problem here. People wanna start losing weight, they wanna get fit, they wanna get strong. They are excited in the beginning. They hire a trainer, they join a gym. They go for the first week because it's exciting. What happens at week 54? What happens at week 24? What happens at week 16? If you don't pre-book your workouts and your schedule, it's not gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna show you my scheduler for those of you who are you know, watching or listening, you can't see it. I see that sheet of paper right there? That's got blocks of the entire week. So I use an Excel spreadsheet and I map out my workouts from my time from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night. Every hour, every day, I'm blocking my workout. I'm making sure that it's pre-booked. If you don't pre-book your workouts, you're not gonna succeed. I don't care how good your coach is, you may succeed while you're there, but then guess what? What happens Friday, Saturday, Sunday? You don't have your coach there, you don't have your gym open with your classes, then what? You fall short, you don't work out, you go to two birthday parties, you overeat. The calories you ate on Saturday and Sunday with the alcoholic beverages you had just threw you back three days. So you go weigh yourself on a Monday and you're upset, okay? There's no one to blame but yourself. Remember, these are ways to break your body's plateau. And if you learn and even use five out of these 15 principles, you're gonna have success. Number nine is be prepared, okay? Buy lunch containers, a small plastic Tupperware. Uh, take a picture when you've made your meal. Share it with your coach. Share it with your spouse. Share it with your best friend. We had a client come in yesterday, Anthony Morrow. The guy's lost 6% body fat in six weeks. He's lost, I think it was 15 pounds. And I go to him, oh my God, who have you told so far? Why don't you wanna take a picture? Let's share it. He's like, oh, no, I'm not there yet. You gotta make sure you share your successes and you share your failures, because people are gonna be there to help you out. So if you're not buying Tupperware containers and you don't have stuff to place healthy meals in, you're not gonna wake up and do it when you're in a rush. You're gonna say, you know what, I'll go for lunch, I'm gonna buy the wrong meals. So pre-pack your containers, have the right tools ready to go. Next, number 10 is set reminders. Now this is similar to the reminder that we set for the meals, but this one's different. In your cell phone, set reminders to remove glucose after 6 p.m. and only have three quarter cup carbs on fun nights, Wednesdays and Saturdays after workout. So what I tell people is, if you know you break for ice cream every day at 11 o'clock when you watch the news, which you shouldn't be watching the news because it's just news to, and media to make you go nervous, put a reminder in your phone if your phone's gonna be there and put do not have ice cream. So when you see it, you're gonna remember that you physically took the time to type it in your phone you had a reason and a mission why you do so, you put it in there, and because you put it in there, you gotta follow it. If not, that ice cream tastes amazing at nighttime, especially when no one's looking, because you can lie to yourself, and you can lie to everyone else, sorry, wrong way, you can lie to everyone else say you didn't eat it, but you can't lie to yourself, because your conscience is gonna know. Okay, number 11 is be accountable. Now, take a picture of your food prep on Sunday nights, Text it to your coach. Again, show it to someone. Pre-pack your meals where you're cooking an extra, cooking in bulk, you're cooking some protein in bulk, cooking some vegetables in bulk, and your carbs in bulk. But make sure you're accountable to yourself and you have a little journal on Sunday night preparing for the week. You can't book your workout the same day. It's not gonna work out. I don't care what your schedule is. I don't care what your occupation is, but you can't wake up and say, I'm gonna put my workout in based on my day. And I'll tell you why. 
because I own a gym and I can walk into my office right now and I can work out whenever I want any given day. And if I don't pre-book the time and I just say I'm gonna it's gonna happen, it's not gonna happen because chaos is gonna kick in, in the afternoon. People are gonna call, there's a problem with the staff member, there's a problem with the client, a vendor's got a problem, and then your workout takes second place, okay? Um, number 12, we're almost there, guys, and thank you for sticking by us and listening here. I hope you're enjoying some of these tips, is create self-inspiration, okay? Um, take a sheet of paper or a yellow sticky note, make four to five messages to yourself, and place them on your bathroom mirror or somewhere else, if it's the cookie jar you need to put them on, every day so when you wake up, you see them, you remind yourself, and you understand why you're doing this. I'm a very motivating person. I've been born, I feel I've been put on this planet to inject people with motivation, okay? Regardless of my childhood, regardless of the dysfunctional family background that I've had, regardless of all the troubles I've had, I've always found a way to motivate people. And I've always found a way where I get satisfaction of motivating someone else. What happens when you don't have that? What happens when you're the type of person that is not the extroverted person? What happens if you're the person that is calm, quiet, and is taking on this new task of fitness, but you don't got something to help you out when you're by yourself? So you wake up in the morning, you go to brush your teeth, you look at that sticky note. And that sticky note says, I'm beautiful, I'm confident. I'm strong, I will not quit, I can do this, okay? Your brain's gonna see it, your eye's gonna see it, you're verbally gonna say it to yourself, you're gonna say while you're brushing your teeth, whatever you say to the universe, the universe will respond back, okay? And it's also positive affirmations. You're telling yourself constantly, every day, every day, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. That's gonna resonate somewhere, versus not having some kind of a program introspection, meditation, breathing, whatever you're doing to keep your mindset right, okay? You need to have something like that that you can view. Or one of my clients, I'm not gonna mention her name, she knows who she is if she's watching this because I told her this last week. In the area of your home where you have the bad food, put a small little jar, a plastic container, full of reasons why you shouldn't do it. And when you go to that, that container and you open it up and you pull one out, and it's gonna say, why are you making the wrong decision when you're the one who wrote this note? And if you're still not there and you're like, oh my God, I want that bag of chips, and you pull another one out, you're gonna say, do you wanna let yourself down? And then you're like, oh my God, okay, I gotta close the cupboard. And then an hour later, you go back because you really can smell those ketchup chips. And you're like, you know what? You pull another note out and it says, do not let yourself quit on this. You're stronger than that. You may think this guy's crazy, what is he talking about? But these small mindset hacks work amazing. Because if you think of visualization, if you think of constant repetition, if you think of every athlete in the world, okay, even myself, before I used to go into swim meets, when I was in, in high school, I would visualize myself diving off into the water and winning each meet. I would walk up to the trophy section and I would tell the person who's handing out the trophies, um, and if you, if we can reach back and talk to anyone from Dark Memo, the school that I constantly destroyed with swimming, I would walk up to them and I would say, this is for the 50 meter butterfly, the 50 meter 100 IM, I'm gonna be winning this. And at the end of the night, you're gonna give this to me. And they would say, wow, you're really cocky. I would have to pry myself and get myself motivated to say, I'm gonna win this, I'm gonna do this. So if you're not doing the same for your fitness goals, guys, this is 12 months of a commitment for the average person. For myself, it's a lifetime. Now, I'm not trying to put shackles on you and say, oh my God, be afraid of fitness. But if you're getting involved in fitness as a lifestyle, you gotta have things that are there to keep you on track and keep you on the guardrails, okay? Number 13, here we go. Share your success. We've talked about logging your progress in your calendar. Bring the calendar to your next training session with your coach so they can see what you're doing and they can watch and be part of the success in changing the plateaus necessary. Log the good and bad days. Log if you were feeling bad. Log the patterns. You may log sometimes at lunchtime you're not happy, you feel constipated. Log that. You may feel that you have hunger pangs and you have the sweet tooth every day at 5.30. Log that. So when you meet with your coach or your naturopathic doctor or nutritionist, whoever it is, you can show them some information. You know, the hardest part for an exercise sport coach like myself or our naturopathic coach 
or Daniel, who's our head kinesiologist, the hardest thing for any doctor or coach is getting someone in front of them that says, I got a problem. And we're like, okay, let's talk about the problem. Let's talk about what's happened in the last 30 days. And the person in front of you has got nothing. Well, I'm following your program. Okay, how many days a week are you training? Oh, very often. How many days? Three days. Is it constant three days? Oh yeah, for the most part. No, you're lying. Because if you look at your calendar, you'll see that in four weeks, you've only done it twice. And then the other days, you went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you stopped the whole week. That's different from going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, okay? So if you don't have something to log and share, fitness is gonna be a struggle, and it's gonna be a nightmare, and it doesn't have to be, guys. We have clients, we have success stories of people who have constantly been doing exercises, who have constantly gone through the process and who've gotten amazing results. I'm trying to find that, that sheet on my desk here that's got all our testimonials, but I can show you that in a few seconds. I guess someone took it from my office and brought it to the other office. No worries. The next thing we're talking about is planning your cheat meals, guys. Now these are very important, okay? Enjoy a fun meal or cheat meal every week. Preferably Saturday or Sunday, midday, no later than 6 p.m. so that you're adding, not adding high calories at nighttime. We need to make sure you have something fun in life. You can't go chicken salad all day. You can't go no carbs all of your life. Going keto 100% is gonna make you fall flat in your face after six, seven weeks. It's tiring. Set your cheat meal up so you can look forward to it. And the better your success every week, the better your cheat meals. So I tell people, start off by going Wednesdays and Saturdays at six o'clock, half a fist of carb, that's it. In the evening on the other days, you don't need it. If you're getting results, beautiful, let's add some carb on Monday. But if you're not getting results, you can remove Wednesday and keep Saturday there. So you gotta have some cheat meals in there to enjoy and have fun with the process. And number 15, baby, drum roll please. Number 15 is celebrate your habits, not your outcome, okay? So don't strive for big goals or the final outcome. Whether it's a physique change, it's a state of mind, you're trying to quit smoking, try to focus on mastering of the day-to-day -day small habits that you can make little wins each day that amount to big battles in the end. So who makes your bed every day? Put your hand up. I can't really see those of you who are listening on a podcast, but if you don't make your bed every day, start by making your bed. It's a small win you can have to feel you've accomplished something, okay? If you are celebrating the fact that you're trying to have an outcome goal of 20 pounds of weight loss, but Dimitri said, forget that goal. Your goal is three steps. A, can I exercise every second day? B, can I stop eating chocolates, ice creams, candies, juices, and pops. Let's go 30 days. And can I prepare on Wednesdays and Sundays some extra food? Three easy behavioral habitual goals that you can accomplish, you can succeed at, and you can continue on week to week basis versus saying, oh my God, it's been four weeks and I only lost two pounds and 1% body fat. This isn't working versus saying, my goodness, this is amazing. In four weeks, I've been cooking twice a week. I've been removing all the cookies and pops and I haven't had, you know, uh, chips, cookies, all that donuts that I'm used to having. And actually I'm working out every second day or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'm going jogging or having a no technology day on Sunday. If you can follow that small goal, the end result is easy, guys. And it's also gonna put less stress on you from feeling that you're failing. I'm so sick and tired of healing pe hearing people say that fitness don't work for me. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the genetics. It's all bull crap. You haven't tried it properly. And I've outlined 15 ways that you can work on accountability with yourself by yourself. You don't need to hire a trainer. Okay, if you wanna to come to our studio, if you wanna hire us to help you keep accountable, you can do so. But we're gonna give you these tactics and these tricks to follow. All you have to do is tell yourself, can I write, can I read and follow up system? Yes, that's it. If you can follow 
50% of the 15 strategies I gave you today, you're going to get amazing results. Okay. That's it. That's all for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any friends or family that you think would benefit from listening to this episode, please share with them. If you can go to Google and leave us a review, we'd appreciate that. And if you have any questions about body type specific training, you can go to puremotivationfitness.com. You can click on our free ebook, which will actually give you all the different body type characteristics, the traits, the training regimens, nutritional programs for each body type and how they're all different. Because remember, there's a hundred gyms in the city. They're all going to give you some form of training, whether it's small group or team. They're all going to give you coaches from bodybuilders to kinesiologists to physiotherapists. They're all going to give you pools. They're all going to give you great equipment. But what's separating them from everyone else? Well, with us, we're going to care to tell you that you have a fast metabolism and you're 45 years old, for example, and you have skinny fat, which is you have a higher amount of body fat percentage and a very low amount of muscle tissue. And if you continue on this path for the next five, 10 years, you're going to burn more muscle tissue. The fact that I'm telling you this about your body type is going to make you pay attention and realize the next time you go out, instead of having a burger with a poutine or fries and a pop, you'll have a burger with a salad or some yam fries and some soda water or, or a bottle of water. Okay. If you guys are interested in any online virtual training, and you're hearing this and you live far from the club, you're in another city, state, country, you can visit purefit.ca. We can, uh, you can sign up for 15 days of our program. It's complimentary. The most important part of the program is going to be the fact that you're going to be able to speak with Daniel, our head kinesiologist, our head coaches, who's going to sit down with you virtually and ask you questions about your training program, your equipment you have at home, your body type, nutrition, and we'll be able to also explain to you what's the best method to help you get your goals. And more importantly, you can train with us online. That's it for all. I hope you guys enjoyed our 15 best accountability tips and practices. Have a wonderful day. And remember, when it comes to health and fitness, attitude is everything. Bye for now.